Hey everyone, I'm Hawk. I'm Meryl. I'm Jordan. I'm Jesse. And we are from Rum and Board. Today we are talking about Seven Wonders, our, I guess, collective favorite card game. It is by Antoine Bauza and plays two to seven players, but let's be real, don't play it with two players. Get Seven Wonders Duel if you're going to do that. <laughs> and it is for ages 10 and up and plays in about 30 minutes. And it's not Asian themed. <laughs> Unlike the rest of Antoine Bauza's <laughs> game. <laughs> this is a sad but true fact. <laughs> On our channel, we make a drink for every game, but since this is Seven Wonders, we had a hard time narrowing it down. Statue of Gin and Juice at Olympia. The Great Libation at Alexandria. Pina Colossus. <laughs> Just think about it. F. Ephesus. The Great Pyramidori Sour. Side Helicarnassus. Seriously? Pina Colossus. <laughs> We are drinking the Hanging Gardens of Babylon Island iced tea. Cheers. Cheers, Bob. It's good. <laughs> Our <laughs> party's okay. gone. You can find all of our drink recipes on our Instagram. In Seven Wonders, you'll guide your civilization through three ages. Along the way, getting more powerful, getting tons of resources, building a buttload of buildings, battling your neighbors, in military combat. In each age, each player will start with a hand of seven cards. Uh, there are a bunch of types of cards. There's basic resources, specialty resources, uh, blue civics buildings, slash big ass monuments, uh, <laughs> economic buildings, uh, technology buildings, and military buildings. In the third age, you'll also get the chance to build some sweet guilds, which give you a huge amount of victory points. Turns are really easy. Look at the hand of cards you have, choose the building you want to build, put it face down on your map. Then take all the cards you didn't want and pass them to your neighbor. That'll become their next hand of cards. Once everyone's ready, flip over the card you played and build it in your civilization. You'll then get your next hand of cards from your neighbor's discards. Each civilization's also working toward building their civilization-specific wonder. Instead of playing a card, you can sacrifice that building to build another stage of your wonder, giving you cool power-ups and sweet victory points. One of the more interesting parts of player interaction in this game is a bunch of buildings cost resources to build, as shown in the upper left corner. A lot of times you'll have the resources required to build a building, it's totally fine. But sometimes you won't have all the resources you'll need. In that case, you'll need to borrow some resources from your neighbor in exchange for paying them a hefty fine. At the end of each age, you'll beat on your neighbors. The winner gets victory points and the loser gets a badge of shame. At the end of the game, you add up victory points you got from all the different ways you can get victory points, whereas the most victory points wins. So one of the really fun parts about this game is that it's a great gateway game, a gateway strategy game for kind of uh, introducing players, and it works really well in large groups. So if you have a big group of people um, and some of them aren't as good at strategy games, you can get everybody playing together, and then the next time when you take them into a much, like, harder to play game, they'll be less afraid once they know how to play Seven Wonders. Did you say Cthulhu Wars? I didn't say Cthulhu Wars. <laughs> that is not step two. <laughs> no. That's step one. <laughs> step maybe like ten. <laughs> one of the cool things about Seven Wonders is there's a ton of strategies. A lot of them are pretty good. You can focus on your military. You can focus on being the master of all things science. You can just build a lot of blue buildings that have point numbers on them. You can build a giant military. I think I said that already. You can do whatever you want. And you can be a person. I don't know. You have to kind of balance your strategies sometimes. Sometimes you have to look at what the other people are doing and try to do better than them. <laughs> that sets it apart from other strategy games, I think. <laughs> Has a good combination of randomness plus choice. That's one of the, actually I like that a lot about this game, is on your turn you don't have that many choices. There's a lot less like decision paralysis than a lot of games. You'll get a hand of cards, it'll have up to seven cards in it, and you'll pick one to play. Uh, and that's it. And then you get a hand of cards and it'll have six cards, and then you pick one to play. So it's not like there's a million possible moves you can make. I think that's exactly part of why it's a good gateway game, is because at any point for a new player, like... If you choose randomly between the seven options, it's not that bad, and you can, like, there's many fewer options to consider on each turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And once you've made a few of those decisions in your first few hands, then it hopefully becomes more obvious. Like maybe I should start going down this path once you start seeing more of the green signs cards. Like, okay, I already got a bunch of those. Maybe I want more. I like that uh, the only direct interaction you have is with the neighbors on either side of you, which allows you to build um, a story about like what your civilization slash wonder is going through. So like it's very easy, actually frequently, because I sit next to Meryl a lot and she's a little warmonger. I am the like put upon nation of science and liberty next to the like furious spear wielding I don't know fanatics that Meryl is uh, breeding over there. Um, Are you saying the Hanging Gardens from Babylon are sending their vines over to attack? The well, no. Okay, so roads. right now I'm the warmonger, but usually whatever. You know, the the point is <laughs> the point is that there's an emergent narrative that that can grow, and the game enables that by having, as Jordan said, lots of different strategies that you can pursue. So it's feasible for you to be a very scientific nation if you want, but it's also feasible for you to be like a partially scientific nation, but also mostly a warlike nation because you're building atom bombs or whatever. Um, and I like the, the storytelling opportunities that it provides. Yeah, it's not a super inherently thematic game, but it is what you make of it. And mm -hmm. you can kind of role play, as Hawk was describing, and end up winning, or at least doing really well your first time playing. Like, I really like that aspect of this game. It's kind of hard, especially for new players. Um, and even for me having played quite a few times, to really be able to quickly tell who's winning, unless you're just doing math constantly, which for me is no fun. So you're just kind of absorbed in this activity, and at the end, the scoring kind of gets revealed, and you realize, like, oh, that person that we didn't think was doing that well actually won this game, or this person who we thought was winning actually did horribly. So I really like that aspect about this game, and I think that's nice for new players because the points aren't being tallied up as you go, so you don't have this sense of, like, oh my gosh, I'm doing so horrible, mm -hmm. like, this person's 100 points ahead of me because you just really aren't sure. Yeah, there's enough player interaction to remind you that you're, like, playing a game with other people rather than just solitaire, but it's, like, solo enough that you don't get discouraged about what other people are doing. Yeah. This was our after small scale dinner party game for quite a while. Um, it's really good with the five to seven play player count, I think. Play responsibly. Play responsibly.